Hello everyone, welcome to episode 3 of this grand epic Osu adventure let's play series. So in the last episode we covered some basic mods, the most common mods in the game, and in this episode we're going to be exploring the ranking system. It's probably the most prevalent system that exists in the game. So for example, this big big number on your user panel, that is your global rank, it is also the biggest number that's written on your OSU profile, and in multiplayer lobbies, it is the number that is written next to your username. So yeah, very prevalent. I'll be explaining how it works, some common misconceptions about the ranking system, and also giving some warnings to common pitfalls that I think many players fall into regarding the ranking system. So let's get started. First bit of foundational knowledge is that the ranking system is built upon what's called performance points, or PP for short, and that system is very closely related to the difficulty calculation slash star rating system that exists in the game. So I'll explain that first, and then hopefully my explanation of performance points will make sense after that. So what the game does is for every map in the game, it's like, how hard is this map to play? And based on its its wonderfully accurate judgment, um, which is not actually that accurate, <laughs> it assigns the map a star rating value from 1 to 10. So the stars that you see in the song select, that is what that is. It is the game trying to estimate how difficult that map is to play. So then what the game does is for every score that is set on any map in the game, so you set a score, right? And then the game is like, okay, how how many points should we give this score based on how difficult the map is? So the game looks at how well or how poorly you did, and then it looks at the star rating and you know other some other complicated factors about the map, and it assigns you one singular grand <laughs> performance point value for that score. You know, a single performance point value for a score, and then for all the scores that you have set, the game adds up a weighted sum of all of your scores and that is how you get this uh, number that's written right here that is next to your name or right under your name uh, so for me for example i have 10,717 performance points and that puts me at a global rank of 1035 so yeah then what the system does is it ranks everyone in one big ladder and just sorts everyone by how many performance points they have and so i would assume that there are 1034 people that have more performance points than me so yeah that gives me my global rank of 1035. Uh, the accuracy number as a bit of an aside so that is similarly or is calculated in a similar way to performance points but instead of a weighted sum of all the scores you set it's a weighted average of all the accuracies of all the scores that you've set so if a score is very high in performance points relative to your other scores, then it will weigh more into your profile's accuracy number. So that is how that number comes to be. Um, but yeah, so I think probably to explain the most common pitfall, I think, or like a, a good way to understand why this system is not very accurate, and, and you'll hear a lot of top players say that as well, or, or really anyone. Um, but the amount of different kinds of maps in the game and different skills that exist in the game is just about as diverse as the different kinds of music that exist, like, you know, music genres and things like that. So if you put it that way, like, there, there's essentially infinite different types of maps and skills in the game, and they all sort of get boiled down to one number so no matter what kind of map it is no matter yeah no, no matter what it is just one singular performance point number is like oh here you go this is how well you did <laughs> and um based on that and again also there's only just one ranking ladder as well so uh, that is that and then coupled with the fact that like i said the game although it tries its best to calculate how hard a map is it kind of i, I don't know it, it's it's pretty unbalanced and it's basically something that's been abused over the years, and it is ultimately not the greatest measure of skill. Rather, I think the best way to understand the ranking system is that it's a reflection of 
the scores you have set, not necessarily a reflection of your skill in the game or how good you are. So yeah, keep that in mind. I think that's probably the main takeaway of this episode, probably in regards specifically to um, understanding the ranking system, I suppose. Um, so I want to tell a couple stories probably, but um, before we get into that, I want... <laughs> okay, so basically during this episode, so um, as as you can tell, my rank is very close to three digits. So um, my rank right now is 1035, and I want to try getting three digits during this episode while I tell a story. Uh, I'm not sure how well that's going to go, but uh, I'm going to try my best. <laughs> um, so yeah, let me open open the song list. Okay, so yeah, I, I will mention that there's a lot of nitty gritty to understand about the ranking system. I will link the wiki page in the description if you guys want to check that out. But yeah, I'm going to play this map and try to tell a story about uh, once upon a time when, um, so when I was a new player, I played pretty much only for a rank, and then once upon a time, all that changed, and I, I'll talk about that, but um, yeah, th this will probably take a couple tries uh, getting the score, but <laughs> I, I want to see if I can do this, so anyway, yeah, so I think for most of me playing Ozu, I, well, Okay, getting into the game, I think until I was around rank 8000, I pretty much only played for rank, and that was my main focus. Um, and then... Actually... Hmm. <laughs> oh, where do I start? So... Oh yeah, actually, I, I think this story starts around when I was rank 3000. So, at rank 3000, so I had a friend named Yumta, and I, I'll link his profile in the description as well. So, I had a friend who we had met before I got ranked 3000, but we um, he was always a little lower than me in rank, but we were both kind of improving. Oh shit, I missed. <laughs> okay, that's gonna, it's probably going to take a couple tries, but um, I'll get there. So, he was kind of improving alongside me, but we were always like... Um, I was always a bit higher than him in rank. And... So yeah, so when I was ranked 3000, and then I was like, you know what, I think it would be awesome. Um, this Yumta friend of mine is improving so much, and I think it would be very wholesome if he passed me in rank one day. <laughs> so I got to around rank 3000, and then I was like, you know what, I'm gonna not set any top plays until he passes me. <laughs> so I still played the game. Um, I explored some different kinds of maps and just kind of pushed my limits. Um, I played a lot of unranked maps, which means that the map doesn't have a leaderboard, so I can still challenge myself, but I wouldn't be submitting anything that contributes to my rank. So I did that for a while, and then one fateful day, I think it was like two or three months that I just kind of did that for the most part and didn't really gain much rank because I wanted Yumta to pass me. And then one fateful day, <laughs> he did, he passed me, and then I was like, oh my god, good job, <laughs> let's go. And then uh, the very next day, I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna rank up now, and I think I went from like rank 3.2k to 2.2k in like one day or something like that, um, and then I was like, wow, awesome farming. <laughs> um, oh, I guess uh, that that is that is a term that you'll hear often um, if you don't know what that means, farming. <laughs> so, oh crap, square. Um, so farming basically just means like. Oh man, I, I don't even know how to explain it. It is just um, going for performance point scores, basically. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's, okay, so then I was rank 2.2k ish. Um, I over the next few days I crawled up to like 1.9k. So I broke the rank 2000 barrier. Um, okay, let me try them. Let me try the map. Let me try. And also probably put offset. I'll explain what offset is later, but um if you don't know what it is, but basically just a, a thing to help with accuracy. Um, but yeah, so around this time, I had started playing in tournaments, and so I had a couple other friends that invited me to play in tournaments. I'll, I'll probably tell these stories in more detail as well, but specifically regarding rank, um, so 
these tournaments were specifically designed for people that had a certain rank. So they're called rank restricted. So only if your rank was somewhere in the four digits. Um, so anywhere from 1000 to 9999, then that would qualify you for entry into this tournament. So to sort of level out the skill playing field so that it just doesn't get dominated by top players, right? Um, so I had a couple of friends who wanted to play some tournaments with me, and they were rank restricted to rank 1000. So I was like, yeah, sure, let's go. Um, I like Osu. I like playing tournaments. So um, actually, uh, except this is like right when I started playing tournaments. So I didn't know it yet, but you know, tournaments are very fun. So um, hmm. <laughs> where do I take the story? Okay, so these tournaments did not let you rank up past um, 1000 while you were in them. So, and at the time I was rank 1.9k. So, you know, every now and then passively I would I would set a score um, to increase my rank, um, or or maybe I would just set a score and it would happen to increase my rank, something like that. And then I think like because I couldn't rank up past 1000 in order or like or else I wouldn't be able to play in the tournaments that I was already in. Um, I was like, okay, let me just not set, set scores anymore. But I mean, at the time, I was like, I don't know, I wasn't too into tournaments, so I was just like, okay, uh, I will probably just end up naturally climbing out of four digits at some point. But um, needing to keep my rank like where it was so that I could keep playing in the tournament tournaments that I was in um, sort of took me back to that time where I wasn't playing for rank when I was waiting for my friend Yumta to pass me, when I was like rank 3k. And I was like, you know, the game is a lot more fun when I'm not just like, I don't know, all I'm doing is just playing for rank. So then I I sort of gradually fell back to my old ways of mostly playing unranked maps that don't contribute to rank and um, just playing tournaments because that is what I was having the most fun with. So then I was like, hmm, if I just want to be playing tournaments, then uh, okay, so there's rank restricted tournaments, right? That are uh, like rank 1,000 and um, and under, and and then there's like open rank tournaments that like the best of the best can play in as well. So if you're rank 1,000, that's pretty close, like close enough to the top where you can qualify for these tournaments. Um, but at the same time, you could also qualify for rank restricted tournaments. So at the time. I was like, oh, uh, I just want to play as many tournaments as I can. So I am just going to like this is like the ideal rank to be if you just only want to play as many tournaments as are available and you don't really care about setting scores in single player. So um, yeah, and so for the longest time, I just kind of had my rank around 1000. Uh, and I don't know, I just played tournaments because that, that's what was fun for me. I just did not really want to uh, play single player and just kind of I just like play the same maps over and over again just to um just just to increase my rank by a little bit so that, that was not really fun compared to playing tournaments so I'm just playing with different friends so um I, I think that is what i became known for initially as as a player in the community um actually i mean i don't know i was pretty infamously known for being rank 1000 despite probably being able to go higher. <laughs> but um, long story short, over the years, uh, some systems have been put in place so that um, like you can't just like be in a rank restricted range and just like play every tournament. Like at, at some point, especially if you're good enough to where you're winning them, then there's systems that exist that will push you out of the rank range. But um, yeah, still regardless, I'm still sort of around this rank. Um, mostly because, I mean, my, my point still stands just because, um, I am not really playing rank restricted tournaments anymore. I, I don't know. I prefer playing tournaments a lot more than grinding for scores. So yeah, that, that is, that is a story of um, my, my Osu rank. I guess, obviously there, there's a bit more to all these stories that I, I share, but, um, yeah, that's, that's the gist of it. Um, yeah, these runs um, that, that I'm playing right now, I don't know if I'll actually end up getting the score during this episode, but um, 
hopefully. I'll at least try to get a full combo. E even, like, I don't know if, like, even if I get this score, I'm not sure if it'll bring me up to three digits, but I'll try. Like, I might need to get, like, really good accuracy, like 99 point something. But I should probably not just talk the whole time so I can focus on getting the score. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> Makes no difference. Okay, what what other um, points should I make? Oh, right, okay. So, uh, there's a common misconception about rank that, like, if you do poorly on a map, then you will lose rank. Um, like, you finish the map and then, like, your rank goes down. So, what's actually happening? Okay, so how the game calculates your rank or updates your rank is every time you submit a score, um, or so actually, so your score, your rank updates once a day or after you set a score. So after you set a score, it gets sent to the OC servers, and then um, the servers are like, okay, now what's your new rank? Um, but if people pass you, um, like, let's say, like, so my rank right now is 1035, and let's say someone passed me, and then I submit a score. Um, then only after I submit a score will the game update my rank and, um, and like, give me the minus one. So let's say... I so let's say like I finish submitting a score and someone has so right now let's say my real rank is actually 1036 someone has passed me um but the game hasn't updated that yet so only after I submit a score will it give me minus one so if I set a score and it doesn't increase my rank already um like if it doesn't give me any performance points then it's just going to update my rank um and give me minus one rank uh, so the score itself did not make my rank go down. I didn't lose performance points or anything like that. But um, uh, yeah, so that is how that works. So if you ever, so especially your first play of the day, sometimes you log on and the system still shows yesterday's rank, right? So um, then the first score that you set, if that didn't give you any performance points or like jump your rank up, then probably what it did is it just updated your rank and the minus whatever ranks that it seems like you lost is actually just the servers updating your rank because people passed you. Uh, hopefully not too long, long-winded of an explanation, but uh, yeah, that is how that works. Um, okay, so I, I, I do want to see if getting a decent score on this map will actually bring my rank up to three digits. So I'm gonna try to be quiet for a little bit and just play the map. Rip SS. No!
All right, let's go. That took way longer than I will admit. <laughs> but oh, wait a minute. Um. Okay, well, I did not get three digit from that score. <laughs> that is a bit odd, but um, that. Okay, that is a demonstration of what gaining rank looks like. <laughs> um, oopsies. I I did a bit of a um a blunder in preparation for this episode. <laughs> um, but there you have it. That is what gaining rank looks like. Um, well, for the most part, I just wanted to sort of demonstrate um I guess how the ranking system works in general. Um, but yeah, I guess I probably should have stayed on the results screen, but there there was a little number on the, there's like a row of green numbers and there's one that showed the performance point value for that map. It was like 537, I think if memory serves me that that may be wrong, but it was around 500. Um so yeah, as you can see, my total performance point count has gone up to 10751 now. So, um yeah, that is that is how it works. You go for full combos on maps that are challenging for you, and then we rank. Um, but yeah, keep in mind, again, I think the most important takeaway from this is that it is not completely accurate, and there's a bunch of different kinds of maps in this game that I recommend you explore. So also, I guess throughout this series, I will be trying to show you guys specific kinds of maps that I think are worth, um, I, I, I don't know, I guess very high quality compared to some very popular maps that tend to only be popular because they are good for gaining rank i guess um so yeah and again this map that i played um well for one it has a bunch of different difficulties so if you like the song but these di difficulties towards the top are a bit too hard for you then uh, you can check those out i'll link this map in the description but um yeah that is going to do it for this episode thanks for watching and if you're watching in the future I would say uh, check out my channel, watch the future episodes as well. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching, guys. <gasps>